Hi Sagittarius, welcome back to the Warrior's Journey Tarot. This is your love and romance reading that I do weekly for you guys. Um, this is for the period of January 19th to the 25th. Without further ado, let's get right into it. This is the Tarot Muja Tarot deck. I'm going to do a full Celtic cross with this and I'm going to clarify with Romance Angels and Whispers of Love. Romance Angels, Whispers of Love, let's get right into it. This is for... Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for the week of January 19th to the 25th. Let's get a positive message, please. Something exciting and spicy for Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for the week of 19th to the 25th. <clears throat> Hopefully we can get a reading for someone who's actually, you know, got some love life going on as opposed to just hearing about, you know, Netflixing and chilling. Because those people already know what's going on. Can we please get something exciting for the Sages who have... Oh, there we go. Beautiful. This is the happily ever after. Wonderful, stable family life. But there's some kind of guilt, feeling of sadness, regrets about the past, need to shift focus. This is the world, thinking about traveling. It's about completion of an old karmic phase, double completion. Okay, so new karmic phase coming in. And then you've got... Either someone by the sign of Capricorn or a little bit of uh, greed, ego, or lusty kind of indulgences, addictions, okay? Could even speak to, like, hanging out with the wrong bunch. All right, two of wands, looking out to the world, wanting more, all right? Kind of goes with that world card, which is either, you know, a completion of a phase with a relationship or... You find the right person and you complete me. Okay, so can we please get a full Celtic cross for Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for the week of January 19th to the 25th. And now when I say I want something spicy, please, I, I'm not asking for strippers and, and cheating and all that stuff. And if that's the case, fine. But can we get some, some something that Sagittarius needs to hear for those with love lives? Something for those who are trying to manifest their best life. Let's get a reading for them. This is for Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising. Oh, shiz. Okay, they're like, don't tell me what I'm supposed to do. <laughs> Again, two of wands. Looking out, wanting something more. Wobbly legs, unstable effort, sneaky deceit. Giving birth to something, some new creative venture. Could be a Taurus, Taurian. This represents a Taurus sign because it's ruled by Venus. This is Empress creation fertility lots of love enthusiasm communications coming through another Taurus. this is a taurus all this love and enthusiasm you see right here taurus and taurus okay and there's that eight, eight of pentacles being humble chivalrous gallant waiting try 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 again if at first you don't succeed keep trying bottom marriage all right interesting interesting can we please get a full celtic cross for Taurus, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for the week of January 19th to the 25th, please. Can you get a full Celtic cross for Taurus, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for the week of January 19th to the 25th. For those who are trying, let's get something interesting, please. All right, that's it. That's my sign. All right, there's that King of Cups. On the bottom, we've got Six of Swords leaving a sad situation. We've got this King of Cups here. This is the situation. It could either speak to someone who is a Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio, or it could speak to you in this situation looking for something deeper, something more meaningful that you can commit to. Reunion, Six of Cups, someone from your past, happy childhood memories, nostalgia, someone from your community, from your hometown, from even a family reunion, but it wouldn't be because this is love and romance, this is a reunion. Okay. Someone you've been longing for, wishing for, waiting for, okay? On the bottom, Four of Swords. At the foundation, at the subconscious here, you're, it's about a rest, a rest period, a waiting period, time to regenerate before you have to go out to battle again. Having done a lot of things, putting a lot of things into work, a lot of effort, now you're exhausted. You need to regenerate, okay? Could speak to vacations as well. In the recent past, manifesting, maybe even in a sneaky way. Ah, there's the snakes. Five of Swords, 
little bit of humiliation, wounded ego, a little bit of an abuse of power. Okay, this loss was not an honorable loss or an honorable, an honorable win. Okay. Five again, conflict, double conflict with two fives here. This is five of pentacles. This is you right now. Uncommitted, lack of trust, lack of faith in love. Okay. Around you, this is the sign of Aries. This is the emperor. Could be someone who is very controlling, someone who's very boss-like, a leader, authoritative, very, very uh, strong in their convictions, also very old school and traditional, like the kind that sends love letters and things like that and consistently will try until they get what they want. Okay, and then you've got the world in your hopes and fears, hoping for some travel, hoping for completion, hoping for a new phase, hoping for greater things out there in the world. Outcome and two, you got double completion again, right? The end of a cycle, death card, leaving a sad situation. So something ended, okay? Sagittarius, something ended, definitely. Here's you. King of Cups, I feel like it's a, as a person, someone older, very spiritual, very learned, very sensitive, loving, caring, nurturing, artistic. This is someone who's okay with being in their emotions. Whether you're a female or male, this is the energy of King of Cups. Also speaks to someone who's looking for deep meaning to life. They want to know about different types of spirituality. They want to know about what the meaning of life is. They want to meditate. They want to, um, this could be even a healer, a doctor, you know, therapist, something along those lines. This is the kind of person who is interested in everything to do with the heart and spirituality and emotions, okay? And it's also the king of love. The challenge is manifesting this reunion, okay? There is a reunion here of someone from your past. This isn't a challenge position. So someone from your past is returning. You're looking for something more deep and meaningful and someone from your past is returning. But what do you have here? Your foundation, your subconscious, you're in rest mode, right? At the foundation here, this is a positive place. Honestly, it's not so bad. It's not like you're in eight of swords or you're like, you know, trying, even if the six of swords is down here, it would be a little bit more brutal as well. This four of swords, like you went through something emotionally in your previous relationship. You left it, you were, you know, dealing with it, you processed it, and now after all the battle and the fight and everything's done with that relationship, here you are. You're still in resting mode, nesting mode, okay? You're still at home, wherever you go, in your mind, okay? You're not quite there yet to be open to relationships because you're still in rest mode. Consciously, though, you have faith and you have hope in love still. You have faith and hope in this person, whoever it is you're interested in, or you have faith and hope in love. You know that if you just stick in, hang in there, sorry, stick around, hang in there, that you will manifest it because you have the resilience to see it through and that obstacles are minor and that you can manifest whatever you want in life and you have that faith and, and you can do so in love and romance as well. In the recent past, you got the magician card. The magician is someone who's got all the tools to manifest what they want to in the world. And so in love, it's someone who by any means necessary can do whatever they want. Magician has a little bit of a trickster vibe because, because they can manifest anything. They're like the alchemist because they can do that. There's also a little bit of a manipulation vibe there. Okay. Like if you like somebody and you have a crush on someone and you care about them, you'll do something possibly sneaky because it's within your power to do so just to get closer to find out more about them. That's the kind of magician vibe I'm talking about. Okay. In the recent future, you got five of swords and in love and romance, I feel like this is about being embarrassed, being humiliated. Possibly this person did not reciprocate your emotions, your feelings. And it feels like you, this is a conflict, right? Five of swords. It's about 
losing at something and winning at something both in a negative way. Five of swords here and you see the base of the deck was six of swords. So you got four, five, six of swords. You at the foundation, you're chilling, you're resting now because you went through something. Recent future, it, it goes up, okay? It amplifies. It levels up to the fifth sword, which is going to be an embarrassing situation. Because it, whatever you're doing, if you're trying to force this reunion and this, like, because I see this magician energy in the recent past, which is a little bit manipulative and a little bit, like, doing something un underhanded possibly, which is just because I see five of swords and the magician, and I feel like you're thinking and you're resting, you got hope about this something situation, but you use your powers and your tools on the table to to manifest a reunion or to manifest something, but it's in a sneaky way. You're going to be embarrassed because the person's probably going to know. And then you've got the five of pentacles. That's about lack of faith, lack of trust. That's how you feel. Insecure. Feeling insecure about the situation. It's a conflict situation and it feels like you created it, Sag. Okay, I'm not saying it's like the end of the world. It's not a big deal. It's kind of just like being a little little bit sneaky. Not in a cheating energy, no. But kind of like by any means necessary, get what you need to get done. You care about someone, you want something, you want to manifest it by any, any means necessary. And then the other person might not feel like that because, you know, they have human rights. That was a joke. <laughs> anyway, five of pentacles is about you're going out, you're on dating sites, you're kind of just like in it to meet people and hook up briefly, maybe even like date for like a week or two, then you lose interest and you don't care. All of this is because you don't have faith and trust in relationships and love. Like somewhere along the line you lost faith, but you're looking for something you truly are more meaningful that has depth. And it's challenged because you have this blockage here by someone from your past. Okay? Around you, you've got this Emperor card representing the sign of Aries. So this is someone who is very traditional, very um, older, older, okay? And this is someone who is a leader, a boss, well-to-do, established, and... Um, it's someone in love who is very traditional and will do things like court you, you know, date properly, you know, do all the gentlemanly things, write love letters, woo you, that type of person. And then through their consistent effort, why? Because they're the boss, they're the emperor. They, because of their focus and because of their conviction and because of their power, they generally get what they want. And then you have in your hopes and fears the world. You want it all and you will probably get it, okay? Because this person has interest in you. I can't say you will for sure though, okay? <laughs> in hopes and fears is basically the world is your oyster. You want to see the world. You want to have the better things in life. You want to see what else is out there. You want to have adventure. So that's what you're hoping for. A new phase as well okay and in the end you get the death card it's a very positive card it's the end to an old way of being because look at you at the foundation you're four of swords just kind of like re regrouping yourself getting yourself back together again and thinking about what happened in the past and where your mistakes were what you can do differently and then there's an end to all that old energy that's done the death card can represent someone by the sign of Scorpio. So we've got two water elements here. And it just speaks to like the phoenix rising from the ashes. When the old is done away with, with the death card, when something ends, something new begins. Right? So let's clarify. What is that? Because these two major arcana cards, how many major arcana did you get? Let's see. One, two, three, four, five. Do you know how major that is to get five major arcana cards in one week? like leaves very little room for free will so this is a major karmic phase for you okay 
Let's get one Whispers of Love card for Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for the week of January 19th to the 25th, please. What does Sag need to know for the 19th to the 25th? For love and romance. This is a love and romance reading. Oh, wow, that's a lot. Come on, that's a lot. <laughs> Okay, it is. What the? I, I got to read it to you. Honesty is essential. To be a loving person, it is important that we speak truthfully and in a loving manner. And I'm going to tell you right now, I've gotten this for you before, Sag. Right? We were talking about stalkers, right? In the past. This is my stalker card. Look at this person. Offering love. There's a rose. There's a little baby Cupid there with an arrow pointed at this lovely lady's back. She senses a presence behind her, but she can't see. She doesn't quite know why because this person is wearing a mask. It's not like they're ugly or something. You know, they don't need to wear a mask, but for some effed up reason, they need to hide themselves. There's the moon showing that, you know, there's fireworks here. It's exciting, but this moon is showing that there's secret things at play. Not all is being seen. There are hidden things at work. And it speaks to, um, honesty is essential because it speaks to there being deception here. And people not saying what they feel, not being truly who they are, hiding behind masks, speaking to being authentic. If you care about someone, it's saying let them know. Don't wear a mask because it's creepy. Okay. Oh, shiz. True love. This love is a once-in-a-lifetime love. Does it get better than that? I will read it to you, but look up. Look, there's even an old man here playing a guitar. <laughs> there's an old man playing a guitar in his head, and in her head, there's two unicorns. Beautiful. Beautiful. Okay, whatever. And there's a little baby in a flower. Beautiful. Look at this. I love you. These are very important words. There's I love you and true love. So Sag, I'm just saying it. This is hilarious. Last time I was double creeped out by it. Like, I think it was a page of wands. This deception card. Where is it? Okay. And then another one. I was like, this is so creepy, but somehow it turns out it's love. Like, what the F? Like, I okay. <laughs> and it's like that again. Okay, I love you. These are very important words. Beautiful. It says, choose love. You always have a choice as to what you should do. You definitely do. Stop. Please stop doing this. Okay. People are weird. You never know what's going on in their head. At the bottom, spend some quality time together. It is imperative that we spend quality time with those we are in significant relationships with, listening and talking to each other. All right, we're not going to read the full deck for that. You know I'll read you this one, though. These are really beautiful, I have to say. I just don't understand why it has to go down like this. But, okay, we'll put it in order, okay? So we've got 20. It says, I love you. Isn't that beautiful? That's on the cover of this deck as well. Then we've got Choose Love, 21. Then we've got 30, True Love. And then we've got Honesty is Essential over here at 38, just because I'm running out of room. Okay, so let me read this to you. 20. This is going to take a minute. Um, whether you say this to a pet, a friend, your partner, or yourself, these are the most important words you can say. Don't hold these words in like it will take away their importance. Be willing to say, I love you often and freely. That's that card, number 20. I love you. And then there's 21. Choose love. Let's go to the next page. You always have a choice as to what you should do. When you choose love, negative feelings will have no place in your heart. There's, there's always a choice. Telling and retelling a negative situation will not heal it. Surround the situation in love. Choose to see your responsibility and focus on love. Number 30. True love. This love is a once-in-a-lifetime love. This relationship is part of your life's plan. Unconditional love is easier said than done. Remember the love aspect of your partnership. If it is a soulmate relationship, the connection will be 50-50 and almost perfectly balanced. 38 says, honesty is essential. To be a loving person, it is important that we speak truthfully and in a loving manner. Love seeks to do what is best for another person. Speak honestly. Tell the truth about your emotions. Use this as an opportunity to clear the air and turn this into a positive outcome. Yes. Okay. 
Finally, we've got the Romance Angels. We're going to pull one card for Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for the week of January 19th to the 25th. Can we get one card, please, to let us know what's going on in love for this spread here for Sagittarius? Okay, again? I swear to God, you saw that. That was a... Okay. On the bottom, stay optimistic about your love life. Positive thinking and faith will bring you romance. I'm not going to complain. That's how it, That's how it went down. Did you need more true love, guys? Did you need more? It's right here. How about that? How about that? True love. This is the romance of a lifetime. Wedding. This situation involves marriage. Okay. How many more true loves do we need? Look, let's put the true loves next to each other. Holy moly. Somebody's in love. Wedding. Okay. There you are. There you are. Let's read those two cards. What a fantastic read. When I asked for something exciting, that's exciting. Thank you. I, I was pretending to complain, but when I see cards like that, it, that's exciting. It's a pleasure. True love. You pulled this card because true and lasting love is here for you. If your question was about a specific person, then this card serves as validation of the relationship's divine nature. This individual has genuine love for you, and you both can overcome the issue that the issues that arise. This is especially the case if you can express your feelings through attributes such as kindness, compassion, and courtesy toward each other. For instance, having honest conversations would be an expression of your true love, even if it involves discussing uncomfortable topics. If you're currently seeking a relationship, this card offers you assurance that true love is on its way. Keep the faith that a wonderful relationship is destined to come to you and don't compromise with an unstable partner. It's essential that you treat yourself well by taking excellent care of yourself for the foundation of a true love relationship is two people who cherish who they are. Absolutely. Wedding. You drew this card because of an upcoming wedding, your own or someone else's. It comes to you because marriage plays a role in the answer to the question, to your question. For some people, this card could be a validation that you will get married and asks you to keep the faith and continue enjoying your life without worry about your future marital status. For others, this card signals that you'll meet a significant other at an upcoming wedding or experience something there that will lead to a new romance for you. It can also represent your parents' marriage and the way it affected your feelings and beliefs about relationships. In a few cases, um, this card asks you to look at your present and past marriages and review your feelings with the intention of healing your heart and your relationship. Perhaps it's time to enlist a marital counselor to help you both sort out how you feel. And sometimes this card can signal the end of a marriage, in which case the angels support everyone involved as you come to an understanding about the experience and renew your heart's willingness to love. So please take those cards as it resonates for you, Sad. You practically got an extended reading here. Love you guys. Take care. It was so much fun. That's an awesome read. I asked for something spicy and exciting and we got it, didn't we? It was positive. It was exciting. It had highs and its lows. It was awesome. Bye, Sag. Take care.